everybody, welcome to my channel. My name's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for December 2021's reading wrap up. So it is my last wrap up for 2021. We are going to talk about all the books that I read in December. So let's just dive straight in, shall we? The first book that I read in December of 2021 was Stand Still, Stay Silent by Mina, Mina Sundberg. Um, so this is actually a graphic novel, which if you guys have been around for a little while, you would know is not my sort of regular reading preference but Rowan purchased the three books from this I don't know if that's all there is but if there's more coming but anyway Rowan purchased the first three books because he'd been reading the webcomic on webtoons and really enjoying the artwork and the story so he purchased them and webtoons? oh I thought that's where you were reading it oh. yeah. apparently he did not read it on webtoons because he's never heard of it it's some like a lot of different graphic novelists published their work to webtoons and there's lots of graphic novels and comics and stuff online on the webtoons. I just assume that's where you got it from. No, I've always gone to the side of the webcomic. Oh, okay. He's always gone to, I don't know if you can hear Rowan in the background there. <laughs> He's always gone to the site of the webcomic, which is not webtoons, but in fact its own site. So I will link that in the description below if you want to read it online, um, because obviously, you know, that's an alternative to purchasing it. But anyway, um, so Rowan really, really enjoyed it and he really wanted me to give it a try. So I did and I really, really enjoyed it. It is a really fun story. It's beautiful artwork. I'll just show you some of the artwork. I won't obviously show you the entire book because copyright. So yeah, I love the colour palette. I'm just going to move over slightly because it's easier to hold it over here. <laughs> Um, I love the colour palettes. It ranges from sort of a kind of reddy brown um, and then into purples, uh, blues. Every page has its own kind of colour palette, which I really like. And yeah, it's just, it's really enjoyable. So I'm happy to have started my 2020, well, it was December, but still we'll call it starting my 2021, uh, 2022, I should say, dive into more graphic novels, which I keep saying I want to do and then I keep not doing. So this is a good start, I think. So we have got another two of these books, so I definitely want to pick one of them up at some point. And yeah, really enjoyed it. Like I said, I think on Core Pile, I gave it 8.14, which translates to four stars. I don't normally rate graphic novels because it's not my area of sort of expertise, as it were. But I realised that the new version of Core Pile that G from Books Roast has put out has got a alternative sort of drop down menu where there are certain different things that you can think about for the graphic novels so instead of action you can look at the artwork and give that a rating so I did do that and yeah 8.14 like I said on Pile, which is four stars so what is this about it's actually <laughs> it's actually an, a post-apocalyptic book um and it's post a pandemic so if that's a little bit too close to the bone for you then maybe give it I don't know another year <laughs> two years I don't know maybe don't read it right now but yeah it's post-apocalyptic so a pan you at the very beginning of this novel this version uh, this volume I should say you have the very beginning of where the pandemic is sort of spreading and where it starts and then you go to 100 years later or something along those lines or it might even be longer I can't remember but you go to um some amount of time later it looks at how the world was affected by the pandemic what can happen and the aftermath and now it's however many years later and people are trying to get out into the wastelands that were as a result and explore and discover things and yeah like I said beautiful artwork well written really enjoyable and yeah so highly recommend Next up, we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. On Core Pile, I gave this one a 7.29, which is also four stars. I really, really enjoyed this one, as you would imagine from the star rating I gave it. It's historical fiction, sort of um, urban fantasy. So we follow a young woman called Amelia. Her, her twin sister, Vittoria, is murdered. Amelia is trying to figure out what happened. She and her family are witches, so she makes a pact with a 
the Lord of Hell called Wrath to try to figure out what happened to Victoria. I'm not going to say any more than that, but yeah. I really enjoyed this one, like I said, I thought it was really fun, I thought it was a really well written story, I really enjoyed the character of Amelia, and I just thought it was a great fun read, so I'm really happy to have read it, I definitely want to get my hands on Kingdom of the Curse at some point in the not too distant future and give that a read and see what's happening. I'm not sure whether it is going to be a long series or whether there's just a duology or a trilogy but either way I'm happy to have read it and I'd like to read more of the books in the series so if you like urban fantasy, um, paranormal kind of fantasy and a little bit of historical fiction because it is set in 18th century is it 18th century or 19th century? 19th century I think Italy so yeah it's kind of a bit of a mashup between all of those things so if you like those things then I think you will enjoy this book. Next up I read What I Like About Me by Jenna Gwillem. I apologize I don't know whether I am saying her name correctly everybody that I hear talk about this book says her name in a different way so I don't I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is a contemporary young adult novel set in Australia. It is set over the Christmas period. So if I didn't say before, um, December was my readathon, the Hemisphere Christmas Games readathon. So it was a month long readathon. So the idea here behind the Hemisphere Christmas Games is to kind of explore the fact that there are various different ways that people experience Christmas and people celebrate Christmas. Specifically being that if you live in the southern hemisphere then Christmas is usually well Christmas is during the summer season so it's usually quite warm and so our version of Christmas and what we do to celebrate is usually very different from the northern hemisphere and all the snowy reindeer cold cozy stuff that everyone associates with Christmas. So I thought let's do a readathon where we look at those two different aspects. So it was a competition between the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere and yeah. Um, so I read this book as one of the group books and it was like I said set in Australia which meant that it was over Christmas during summer. Christmas wasn't a huge focus of the book but it was definitely mentioned. So we follow a teenage girl whose name I have entirely forgotten and she is plus sized teenage girl and she's not particularly kind of comfortable within herself um, or particularly happy with her life and her situation. Anyway um, her family always go on this holiday I can't remember where somewhere on a lake in Australia <laughs> they have a holiday house they always go there every single year and they always meet up with this other family that always go there every single year as well and they holiday together um, well they don't holiday, to holiday together but they holiday in the same area so they've always been holiday friends and this young woman has always had a bit of a crush on the young man uh, from this family. This year it is about her kind of trying to figure out what she wants in life and how to kind of yeah what she wants in life, how to be herself, um, who her friends are, whether she really likes this boy, all this sort of stuff. So it's a bit of, bit of a coming of age sort of story. And the reason that I mentioned the plus size is because in this coastal area, this lake area where it's set, they always have like a summer um, beauty pageant type of thing. And her friends talk her into going into the beauty pageant and she does and there's sort of a bit of a thing about she's plus sized and how brave she is and the newspaper want to do an article about her and all this sort of stuff so it's about how that situation kind of confronts some of the issues that she has to do with her her body image and everything like that so yeah I wouldn't necessarily say this was my favorite book of the month certainly not of the year or anything like that but I did enjoy it it was kind of middle of the road for me fairly sort of straightforward standard what you'd expect from that kind of young adult contemporary book where we have sort of a coming of age person dealing with issues trying to figure themselves out type of thing so it was done reasonably well but it wasn't you know like I said the most amazingly written book or anything like that. I did think that some of the topics that were covered were quite important. It does read a little bit young so I think it's aimed at more kind of say 13, 14 year olds um, and I think that some of the topics like I said that were covered is important for, for that age group to read about and think about and yeah I, I thought it was quite good. Wasn't necessarily 
aimed at me, but for who it was aimed at, I think it would be a really good book for the for that age range to read. On Core Pile, I gave this a 6.14, which translates to three stars. So now I would like to talk to you about Dancing with the Octopus by Deborah Harding. So this was the book that I was reading for Chloe's Crime Scene Corner. This is a memoir and it is about Deborah Harding. So it says on the back, one Omaha winter day in 1978, when Deborah Harding was just 14, she was abducted at knife point, thrown into a van, assaulted, held for ransom and left to die. But what if this wasn't the most traumatic defining event in her childhood? So as you can tell, there's a lot in this book. It details a lot of different things that happened to Deborah when she was a young girl, when she was a teenager. It talks about how the trauma of the various things that she went through has affected her in later life. Looked at PTSD and talked about the fact that there were some things that she kind of hadn't really even acknowledged as something that wasn't that was traumatic, that wasn't, you know, a good thing to go through. And it's about family family relationships and about how the various different members of her family have dealt with or not um, some of the trauma and some of the violence that happened within the household. It was really, really well written. I thought that she was an excellent writer. And, yeah, it was really, really interesting. It was very hard to read at some points but like I said it was really interesting not hard to read because of the writing just because of the content um, but it was very readable having said that so you didn't feel like oh I'm reading you know this textbook that I have to like kind of drag myself to read it was very easy to get through and very enjoyable to read in the sense of the writing style was enjoyable to read but like I said it was difficult at the same time because of the subject matter so definitely look this up for trigger warnings if you are triggered by things in in books um, particularly given like I said this is a non-fiction this is a memoir so I definitely look into that but I would highly recommend particularly if you do enjoy true crime yeah I think it was really really interesting I did not rate this one because it's non-fiction and I just don't feel comfortable rating I mean essentially it's someone else's life story it's someone else's experiences so I don't feel comfortable rating and particularly in a memoir when it's not like she needed to do I mean she did do research but it's not like she needed to do research into a topic area or anything like that so I can't even rate sort of how much research did this person do how much effort did they put into getting as many facts or as many different viewpoints as possible all of that sort of thing so it's based on something that happened to her or definitely a few things that happened to her so I didn't want to rate it because I didn't feel like that was fair um, but definitely highly recommend it's really well written so yeah that's that one Next up we have A Winter's Tale and I have forgotten, now let's see, did I write down, no I did not write down who wrote it, I have forgotten who wrote this book, the image will be up here because I've returned it to the library. This was a fairly kind of standard straightforward romance, contemporary romance, I enjoyed it, it was easy to read, it was fun to read, there was nothing particularly amazing or outstanding in it but at the same time, like I said, it was easy to read and enjoyable to read. We follow um, a young woman who is trying to become, so she's at school, she's trying to become a, I think a producer, not sure. But anyway, she's trying to get work within the film industry and she is trying to get an internship. She goes to an interview for a very famous production company and she doesn't get the role. But on her resume, she has Nanny. So the production company don't give her a job, but the wife of the manager or the owner of the production company calls her and gives her the job of a nanny to their child. So she ends up taking the job. She goes and becomes a nanny for like, I don't know, six weeks or something like that over the Christmas holidays, Christmas winter break. Um, it's set in the States. And... She meets the brother of the production manager person. He's all tortured and, you know, lots going on, like had stuff in his in his past and he's all down in the dumps about it, grumpy old man kind of, not old, but grumpy man kind of thing. And of, of course, initially they meet, they have a kind of meet cute that doesn't go very well and he gets 
really annoyed with her and she gets really annoyed with him so it's very hate to hate to love kind of situation which normally I don't necessarily really enjoy but in this particular situation I thought it was done reasonably well I didn't like I said it didn't blow me away it wasn't something that was the most amazing book that I've ever read but I enjoyed it for what it was um it did follow quite a few kind of regular tropes that you'd expect from romance so like I said there was enemies to lovers or hate to love um and there was the kind of people starting to realize that there's more to this girl than meets the eye kind of thing and yeah all that sort of stuff plus there was a cute kid involved and yeah it was pretty easy to read and fun and I quite enjoyed it. On Core Pile I gave this one a six which again is three stars. Next up we have Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. This is the first book in the Watch series which is one of the series that is written in the Discworld series. <laughs> so for those people that don't know how Pratchett works. The Discworld series is a series of books, I think there are something like 30 books or something like that, all written about, set in this world of the Discworld, which is a flat disc world that travels through space on the back of four elephants who stand on the back of Great Aechuan, the Sky Turtle. So yes, it is fantasy. Within the Discord series, there are a bunch of different series that have their own sort of structure and logic. There are standalones. There are a whole bunch of different things. So you can read pretty much any of the Discord books in any order. You don't even have to necessarily read the separate series in order. Although I prefer to because, for example, the Watch series focused on the City Watch of Ankh Morpork. And in this one, we start out by focusing on Captain Vimes and Sergeant Colon and uh, Corporal Nobbs and Corporal Carrot. A whole bunch of different things happen in this book as well as being an adventure to do with dragons and to do with lost kingships and to do with politics and who should or shouldn't run the kingdom and all of that sort of thing. It is also a character study about those characters, particularly Vimes. And as you go through the Watch series, we explore those characters, we explore the city Watch, we see the development of the Watch and those characters. You may be able to tell this is a reread for me. I do not know how many times I've read this book. More than twice. But yeah, it was a reread for me and I really, really enjoyed my reread of it. I love Terry Pratchett. The Watch series is my favourite series of the Discworld series. So... Not surprising that I really, really enjoyed this one. It is a, like I said, it's a fantasy novel, but it is also a satirical look at society. Yeah, an allegory for our world and our society and our religions and policies, politics and etc. So definitely highly recommend if you are a fantasy reader. So I gave this one a 7.86 on Core Pile, which is four stars. The next book that I read in December was Christmas Promises at the Little Wedding Shop by Jane Linfoot. I didn't love this book, to be honest. It again was a fairly kind of formulaic romance but unlike the other book which was also a reasonably formulaic romance I didn't think that the formula really worked very well or wasn't written particularly well. First of all it was too long. We have a series of different events that happen throughout the story that we then explore in quite minute detail, which was totally unnecessary. They could have cut that down, could have cut out some of it, could have, yeah, it just wasn't necessary for it to be that long. I was very close to DNFing this book throughout reading it. The only reason that I didn't is because I was actually reading it for the Habens near water prompt for the Hemisphere Christmas Games and I didn't have another book for that. Uh, well, that's not even true. I had another book for that, but I ended up putting that one aside because I wasn't in the mood for it so I didn't want to then do the same again so I wanted to be able to get that prompt ticked off which is why I stuck with this book um but if it had have been any other situ situation I wouldn't have yeah like I said it was fairly generic it was very much felt like kind of right by numbers it felt like the person had said well here's a whole bunch of tropes that people like in their romance books let's put them all together into a book and see what happens. Didn't think it was particularly well done with the formula. So we follow a woman who is I think in her late 20s or something like that. So she has always loved Christmas and 
always made a big deal out of Christmas. But then the year before, when the action happens in the book, uh, she was proposed to by her partner at Christmas time, and instead of reacting favorably to that, she literally ran away. So they split up, and her whole life has kind of changed as, as a result of that, and she hasn't really gotten over it yet. And then when the book takes place, it's a year later, she's been asked by friends of his to photograph their wedding and it's taking place where she used to live somewhere on the I think in Devon Cornwall area of England I think on the coast anyway of the UK in this little seaside village and she agrees even though she is not a wedding photographer she is a food photographer she agrees to take the job because it's going to be fairly straightforward anyway she goes, she decides she's going to ignore Christmas, she's just going to do the job and then hole up in this little apartment above the shop where she knows the people that work and own the shop. And of course, none of that goes to plan. Um, the photographer for the wedding shop, which is where she's staying, is suddenly ill and she has to do all these different weddings and even though she doesn't know what she's doing and she ends up coming across an old person that she, well, it's not even an old flame, an old person that she was interested in back in the day in her teenage years so on and so forth so like you can see it's got all the sort of tropes that you'd expect we've got enemies to lovers because we've got she doesn't really get along with this character that she's come across again but then we've got the not gotten over the ex-boyfriend and at the end of the book we have about sort of six different happy endings in terms of like every kind of character gets their own version of what the ha what they wanted as their happy ending. And I know that that could potentially happen in life and also, you know, it's nice. It just felt too tied up in a bow, but it also all of the happy endings felt very formulaic, very like, oh, well, of course, that's what would happen. Well, of course, that's what would happen. It just didn't do it for me. I just didn't love it, basically. Wouldn't recommend it. So to reflect that, I gave it 2.86 on Core Pile, which is two stars. But we are going to finish off the video on a positive note because the last book I want to talk to you about is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. And I absolutely loved this book. Are we at all surprised? Probably not. This seemed exactly like my kind of thing. It is a fantasy book with whimsical writing and sort of dreamlike qualities to it. I was recommended by, well I've been recommended this book by a few different people and I've always loved the sound of it when people talk about it but I was specifically recommended this book by Kat from Brews and Reviews in my These People Are Helping Me to Celebrate Two Years on Booktube by Suggesting Books to Me video which I will link in the description below if you'd like to go and check that out and see what else I have been recommended. Anyway um, so I read this book I had been feeling a little bit nervous because of all the hype so even though I kind of thought this is probably going to be my cup of tea I was nervous about the hype and whether I would love it as much as the hype suggests but I did. It was fantastic. To be honest at the very beginning of the book, it took me a little while to get into it. I was intrigued and I was enjoying it, but I wasn't completely blown away from the first bit. Um, so it probably took, I think, about the first sort of 100 pages for me to really get into the story. But once I did, it was absolutely fantastic. Lainey Taylor is one of those authors who makes you feel like you just don't understand how somebody's brain can work that way, how she can come up with these ideas and just how, how does her imagination and her brain work. She absolutely blew me away with all of the different ideas she had in here. It was so creative and so well written. Like I said, it's that sort of flowery, very descriptive writing that I often really love, quite lyrical writing. I have heard that this book is really, really flowery, really um, over the top with its descriptions and very purpley prose. I would not necessarily agree with that. I think that it is very lyrical and whimsical writing and I think she has a very almost poetic style. But even though that is the case, I don't think it's any more descriptive than something like The Wheel of Time or something like Brandon Sanderson or someone like that who has really in-depth world building and really in-depth characterization. So I would say that even though her 
prose is definitely very lyrical and whimsical, that it still is, it's not over the top. It's, there's still a certain amount of, well, there's editing, obviously editing happening. <laughs> so it's not over the top, it's not overdone, it's not a situation where I feel like just get on with the story. I thought that it was absolutely beautiful writing. So the writing style was definitely my favourite thing. But having said that, like I said, um, the general imagination that <laughs> Lainey Taylor has just blew me away. We follow a young man, so I think he's like... 18 or 19 or something like that and his name is Laszlo and we follow him when he we start out when he's a young child he is an orphan um and he no one knows who his parents are so he has been given the surname of Strange which is what happens in this land when kind of like in Game of Thrones how you had Jon Snow so Strange is the uh, surname people are given when we don't know who they are and he is as the name suggests a dreamer he is a character who is very um, interested in fairy tales and has all these fantastical dreams and ideas and notions there's a legend of this famous city that has all this incredible fantastical legend surrounding it when he's a young child he's completely obsessed with this city and then one day suddenly the name of the city just entirely disappears from everyone's brain and all references to the city is gone from all history books all sources no one can remember the name of it and they all call it weep and then many years later when he's now an adult it's almost become a legend and people don't really believe that it ever existed but then all of a sudden it appears as though maybe it does exist and he is taken to the city of weep to help figure out what's going on and solve some problems that they have and some of the problems that they had were just yeah just blew my mind just incredible highly recommend it if you enjoy fantasy if you enjoy lyrical prose if you enjoy mag magical realism fabulism at all i would definitely recommend this book i think that it is beautiful there is another book which is called the muse of nightmares and i will be reading that in january as well i'm very excited to read that one and find out what the conclusion is but yeah definitely my favorite book of December and like I said one of my favorite books of 2021. So that was a nice way to end the December wrap up. If you have any comments on any of the books that I read, any thoughts on of your own about those books, please do leave all of that in the comments below. If you would like to leave me a comment but you don't know what then leave me a butterfly emoji in honor of these little, well they're actually moths, but a butterfly or a moth emoji in honor of Strange the Dreamer. All of my social media details are listed in the description below so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching, I really do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.